This is QCT5 Beginnings, and this video will be showing um, doing a nested pantograph. So we're going to start out touching pantograph, and we have to set the safe area. So I'm moving my needle um, all the way back and to the far left and still be on the backing and moving it all the way forward and to the right and still be on the backing and touch bottom right. So now I'm in the, um, the area um, where I measure the width and this is the yellow ruler area and you want to um, set your beginning point in your top left corner and you want it the distance from the edge um, that you would want the stitches on the left to start and then <clears throat> from the top edge with where you want the highest stitch to hit. With this particular quilt, I want all the quilting to be within the quilt top, so that's why I'm measuring inside the quilt instead of outside. So I want it half an inch from, from either edge. So I've marked that, and I'm going to put my needle over the intersection of those lines. And then I will touch the left side there. And then over here on the right side, I, I can put it anywhere along the right side. It doesn't have to be up there at the top. And I've already marked... A half inch there and I'm going to put my needle over that and touch the right side. Now that has set my quilt width and I want to touch the little black sewing machine and I'm going to go ahead and move my machine near the center here because it's going to move the needle to the very center top and that'll be even with where um, I had originally um, put that half inch. So this is half inch down in the center now, and because this quilt will be washed and dried, I'm just marking it there. There's um, different ways you could mark it, but that's the way I'm going to do it and say apply measurement. Okay, so now for the total height, um, because it's beginnings, that can only be the amount that the throat of your machine will allow, and you want it to be an amount that once um, the quilt builds up on the rail, then your your quilt will still be able to have that same height. Um, so I'm just going to pick 10 for now and say, okay, because it's a, a nice even number. And I'm going to pick a certain pattern from Urban Elements. And I'm picking one with leaves. So, um, and also I want to point out that I am using primary school finesse thread. So that's what I'm using to quilt with. Um, I want to do two rows, so I'm going to do two rows. And I want the grid lines to show, so I go into options, and this green is checked, so I say okay. So now each blue grid is one square inch. So I want to nest these, and because... I'm doing a, a Quilts for Kids where the quilting will not be going off the top edge. I don't want um, partial, um, partial stitching at the top. I, I want it to stay a complete row. So for, for me to do that, I have to make sure that this little star right there is not selected because this is what allows vertical wrapping, and I don't want that. Um, I also don't want horizontal wrapping, so um, this, this is the selection that um, will not allow horizontal wrapping. If you do this one, you can see the pink line start to show up. If I were quilting off the edge, I would want that. Um, sometimes with this bottom selection, the patterns won't be joined, so you have to watch that. But um, what works best for me now is that top heart, so you can play with those. And and the other two rows of hearts just are just different ways of of uh, being on the on the screen. I, I never use them, so um, so right now I want the top heart, but you can play with those and see what works best for you. And then um, and then the number of patterns you just have to um, just keep playing with that you can see that four that looks funny already so you know that doesn't look good and these look very small you can 
um, see with with these being one inch those are really small uh, leaves so I'm going to take it back to two patterns across um, now I want them to nest together um, so I'm going to use the fit and if I were to use this second one um, here's what happens I'm I'm going to touch size and when I touch the icon to get bigger Look, it, it goes off the screen. Well, I don't want that. So I'm going to reset it, and I'm going to choose this third fit down. And now, as I make them nest, you can see that the the leaves that are um, the top top stitching leaf and the lower stitching leaf, they stay with within my total height. So that's what I want. And um, I'm just going to leave this gap up at the top. Um, normally I wouldn't do this, but I want to show using a nested pattern. So um, it's it's just going to be two and a half inches um, in the widest part that doesn't have quilting. So that's really not that bad. So we're going to go with that. But I want to show you um, these choices over here. Uh, when you touch size, you get this um, icon to get bigger and this icon to get smaller. These two icons look like they're active, but they're not. Like if I were to do the smaller, you can see it does nothing. So these are inactive. Um, when I touch move, then I get these two blue arrows to go left or right. But if I touch um, the fit, then all four are active. So um, when I touch the second one, um, these two become inactive so just be aware of that when you're doing your size when you touch flip like if if um, your second row you wanted to flip and at that point you would um, you would need to choose alternate um, and you can see that makes that row be a darker blue if I choose all then it makes them both be dark blue so whatever I do will affect um, both rows so um, just be aware that what is selected here will depend on what change you make which row it affects and and if you see you've messed up you can always touch that blue arrow up there to go back to undo so um, so when you touch flip then you get these choices and and like if if that second row I've got it um, highlighted in darker blue right now if I wanted to flip it horizontally then I could choose this one and it flips it and then you get a few more choices as you come down but I'm going to take it back up because I don't want it flip but that's how um, how you would flip it horizontally if you wanted to flip it vertically then um, this is how you would flip it vertically so um, if you wanted to rotate then you get different choices here so when you touch things you get different choices um, but we're going back to size and so um, something that's unique to beginnings is when you have a nested design, once you start quilting and you've quilted out your two rows, then because with beginnings, all you can ever do is two rows, QCT isn't able to give you your exact row placement. The only row placement it's going to give you is, is the center or, or the corners, um, you have two choices. You can choose corners or you can choose center. Um, we'll just talk center for now. Um, but all it can give you is even with this line where your lowest stitch is. So what we have to do before we leave this screen is figure out how much above this um, bottom row center mark, how much do we measure up um, to know where the um, actual point that we're going to say is the center because we can't we can't use this one it's down too low it would give us a, a gutter between the rows and we we don't want that we want the third row when it stitches to be nested so we're going to go into the uh, magnifying glass and and you can see which leaf is the very highest it's this one right here so that's the one we're going to focus on is that highest leaf. And so if I touch down the line, then it blows it up. And here's what I'm looking for. This highest leaf, which leaf above in, in row one does it have in common? And it's pretty easy to see which row is row one and two because row two is still in the darker blue. 
So you can see that this leaf right there is even with this leaf right here. So now this is kind of a two-step process. So that was the first process to see what in this row above is the same height as the row below it. So it's that leaf right there. So now we want to check this leaf right here because this is the same leaf as that leaf, only in the second row. So we want to know what is the distance of the tip of this leaf from the bottom of that row. So when you look at this, it is almost two inches. So you have one inch, two inch. Um, you can play around with the sizes up here. Uh, you may want to adjust something just a tiny bit. So at that point, you would say all. And you may think this is a little more nested. So you could change the step. Um, this is how you change the step size. You could change it to um, be a little smaller. Maybe you want that to be exactly even. And I can shrink it a little bit. And, and maybe I think that looks better. If I touch fit, I'm able to look a little closer. But I do think it needs to nest a little more than that. So, um, so I'm going to grow it a little bigger. And, and I think this, this looks pretty good. I can touch the fit and be able to tell. And, and then, um, so this leaf right there, and, and even with that leaf there, so it's just a tiny bit less than two inches. So you may want to write that down. You may want to take a picture with your camera because you're going to need to remember that amount right there when you get into um, to your quilt screen. And after you've quilted these two rows, and then QCT is going to take you to the very center here, and then you're going to need to measure up that almost a scant two inches. So now we're going to touch the X and go back out. And we are ready to sew in zones now. But oh wait, we need to save it. So we're going to touch the, um, the save thing. And I have a working pantos. And I'm going to call this leaves. And we'll say enter and save. Now we're ready to sew in zones. So I've already saved it, so no, I don't need to save there. I need to go in Zone Manager, and it gives me a warning because if I had already placed this zone, I would need to replace it, but we haven't placed it yet. So um, this zone number, all beginnings can ever sew is, um, zone number one so these um these and because this is a rolling rail frame this is zone one and that's all it's ever going to be the zone scale percent um i have a 21 a cunique 21 so i'm going to make this a 95 and and you'll notice that the numbers underneath change as as these numbers are changed now the width is 100 because because the the width of your quilt is inside of your safe area. Your safe area is larger. So this width, you will always be able to stitch. So that's why you can give that 100 and leave it there. Your height, um, this is not a set it and forget it, so to speak, number. Um, you could change that. With, um, with my machine, I'm, I have an idea of, of how much this sewing space is going to be. And that's why when I first set my height over in the panel stacker screen, I'm thinking then what is going to be my height that I can stitch um, when I get to the end of my quilt. So that's why this one is important. Whatever your percent height is and, and what's really critical is what is that um, amount of inches right there. Um, like if you had a, um, we're going to change it to 90, and I want you to watch that 15, how it changes. Now it's changed to that. So if you have a, um, say, a, a Q15, then you're going to have less throat space at the end. So you may want to come in here and see what inches is that percent going to give you. And um, so just, just be aware of that. I'm going to change this back to 95. Um, and now you have two type of zone placements. So you have this 
and if you touch it, it gives you four point. And when you have four point, you're actually able to pick the top left or top left and right. You pick however many of those corners that you want. Um, so for right now, we're going to go with the center. The next one is grayed out. It just means your zone is going to start stitching from left to right. Um, in the sewing direction, um, uniform is just always left to right. And then this back and forth, what, what this will do with my two rows, it's going to stitch across, it's going to give a jump stitch down, and then it's going to sew the other row back. If I picked continuous, then it's just going to go ahead and do a straight line. But because I'm sewing on top of the quilt top, I don't want that straight stitching. So I'm going to come back to back and forth. And I do want to make a comment about this back and forth. If um, in, in the panel stacker screen, I had moved this row up because I could have selected both rows. And, and maybe I should just do that. Let me go ahead and um, and show that. We're going to go back to the Panto Stacker screen. It's already saved. So, um, But in this screen, let me X out. Back to the Panto Stacker screen. If I did not want this gap up here, then I would make sure that they were all selected. And I would do move. And I would have to put that fit up there. And then I would just move this up. OK, but you can see um, it cuts off a lot of things. So that would cause a lot of um, short stitches and, and jump stitches from one spot to the next. So um, so with that in mind, um, we'll just go back to the sewing zones real quick so you see what happens. So when I go into optimize to take out these these blue dots, because everywhere there's a blue dot, that means there's a jump stitch. And the red and the green, um, green is where it starts and red is where it ends. And so if I say remove all, do you know what happens? It will remove the one over on the right that I want. Um, so if I, and I would always say no to that, but you can see now I've got that jump stitch. I mean, a, a straight line stitch. Well, I, I don't want that. I'm going to cancel. So what I would have to do in the optimize screen is say check for breaks and then do animate stitching. And one by one, I'm going to have to answer, do you wish to remove this break? No, 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 no. And I would do that until I got to this one. And this one, I would say, leave that break. So um, we're gonna cancel out of this, go back here. And if, if you were stitching this out, when this got through, you would come back to this screen and, and you would go to the, um, the pattern that you had saved. Let's see, that one was leaves. And open it back up as a pantograph. And now you would be ready to stitch your third row because you wouldn't want your third row to be that partial one. So um, we're going to go back to sewing zones now. And no, we don't want to save. And over in zone manager, we have everything like it needs to be. Um, 195 for a 21 center and back and forth. So we say, okay. And now we need to set um, set the zone. So I'm going to move my needle over that pink dot and touch there. And then you'll notice when I do that, the blue diamonds light up there. They were grayed out before I did that. So if you ever wonder, have I placed my zone? Um, maybe a dog runs in the room. If your um, diamonds are gray, then you know you haven't. So now we're ready to, um, to stitch this out. And if I wanted to trace just to make sure where things were going to hit, then I would just hit trace um, and then stop it when I was um, happy with where it was tracing. But right now we're going to go ahead and pull the bobbin. But you know what? There's something I need to do first. Um, I need to go into settings. We didn't do that. Um, we need to make sure what speed it's going to sew on. So that's medium. Um, if you want to do micro stitches, how many? Because you can touch that and, and pick your number. 
Um, if you want automatic bobbin pull, select that. Um, if you don't, um, then have it unselected. It's just a toggle and then however many stitches per inch you want. So I'm going to go with 12. So make sure you set that before you get started because once it takes off stitching, then it's too late to set it then. So now we, we have that set. So um, now we're ready to pull bobbin. Okay, take that single stitch and I'm going to reach under and grab that bobbin thread and, and I'm going to hold it very snug so that there's a nice firm thread path starting out because if you leave it loose, um, it, it may take a few stitches to catch up and get tight. So now we're ready to hit sew. All right, so when these two rows finish, um, we'll be back when it's time to pull the bobbin. The stitching has reached the end of the, of the first row and you get a message. It doesn't just keep going with it without you, um, unless you say do not show again or something, but it says, please ensure the needle is up and you say, okay. And then it takes a, a nice long jump stitch down and then it will um, tie off and start stitching it again for the second row. And so what I will do once I take the quilt off the uh, frame, then I will cut this thread in, in the center and I will bury that thread. And I will do the same with the bobbin thread underneath. Okay, so the ending stitches are being made. It stitched the first row across and jumped down and came back. So now we are ready to pull the bobbin. And you do want to pull the bobbin before you say you're finished. So just remember to do that. So pull bobbin. And if your um, design took very long, it's going to tell you the interface timed out. So we're going to say pull bobbin again. And it takes a second for the screen to switch over. Um, because I am stitching on um, within the quilt top, I'm going to say move away. I could say release carriage and move the machine manually myself, but I'm going to say move away. And I'm going to grab this thread and say move back. And it always asks if the needle is up, and that is a very good thing. Um, and now I'm going to take a single stitch. Okay, at this point, I'm going to say release carriage, and now I can move the machine back, and because I want to have thread tails to bury since I'm within the quilt top, um, that's what I'm doing. So um, I've given myself plenty of the upper thread to bury, and this one I want to cut the one that's pulling loose. So this is my bobbin loop, so I'm going to cut this one. So now I have that, and you can see the tiny little bit of bobbin that's still there, but when I move the machine, of course, that pulls it off. So now we're ready to say back, and we're going to say finish zone, proceed to next zone. And I'm going to go ahead and move my machine near the middle because I know that that's um, where it's going to be moving to. And the needle is up. Okay, so now... The, mach the machine has moved to the bottom um, of, of the second um, row to the center. So I'm going to go ahead and make a mark there. Um, this is going to be washed, so I don't care if I'm marking on it. And, and you, you have choices. You could take a single stitch. You could make a sewing mark where it does kind of like an L. Um, or you can pull the bobbin. So these are your choices. And um, this doesn't really play into um, being important with beginnings. If, if you were, say, using Pro where um, it's going to mark um, for 
uh, where you need it for nesting on down, then then you would see blue lines across this, and, and you would know where it was going to stitch. Like if you had a little piece of tape, you'd know if it was going to stitch across your tape. But, um, but right now, we've made that mark, and we're going to say continue, and it goes crazy because it thinks we didn't mark it. Um, and now I'm going to do this and say release carriage. Okay, so I'm going to push it back. So here's my mark, and remember how we measured up and set a scant two inches? So I need to measure up. I'm going to measure up, not quite. Okay, so when I measure up, I don't want to do this or this. I want to, um, to do a very good job of having my ruler straight. So I've got this, um, this even with that um, seam line there. And so I'm going to make a mark right here. Okay, and so when, when we advance the quilt, then that's what I'm going to put the um, put the needle over. So I'm going to advance it right now, and and um, and then we'll come back. Okay, one thing I'm going to do before I actually start stitching, and that is I want to baste up the sides. I've already basted it on one side, but I want to show you basting the other side. I go into the red toolbox, and for Cunique and Brother machines, there's a feature called baste. Uh, if you don't have it, you would have to go into Release Sewing Machine. But we're going to say Baste, and I'm changing the speed to 5. That's the very fastest one. And I'm pulling my machine toward me, and I'm going to take a single stitch. And it does it quick. And I'm going to move my machine back and grab that bobbin thread. And then as soon as I say Slow Baste, it starts in. So I do a kind of a few little stitches there to kind of lock it, and then... Um, the, um, the stitching is very methodical. So however much I move it between where the needle goes up and down, that's, um, the length of the stitch. So I'm going to let it do a few and I'm going to say stop. And now I'm going to move the machine away a little bit and move it back. And I'm going to say single stitch. And now I can pull my, my thing up. So now I have now I have the side basted. Okay, so then we say exit. So now I'm ready to move my needle over the dot that I made. This was the original dot right there. And then we measured up that scant two inches. And so I'm going to move my needle over that spot and touch there. And now my zone has been set. My diamonds have turned blue. Um... Just um, so that you're aware of what you can do, I'm going to do trace. Um, we can make sure that the, the leaves are going to hit like we want them to. And there will probably be designs where you want to do that and, and just make really sure. Okay, so the needle is up. And it started a half inch from the edge, so that was good. And now it's it's just tracing along. Okay, but it's going to take a while. Um, well, actually, it won't in this one. I'm going to show you something else you can do. But now we want to see does this does this hit where we want it? And it did. It was. Um, if, if you weren't watching close enough and you're like, oh, I wasn't looking, I want to make sure, you could say resume backwards. Um, you could also say, there's a choice there, it's, uh, it's um, covered, but it says uh, resume from end. Maybe you want to check where the ending stitch is. So you have some choices there, but we're going to say resume back. And so you're watching um, this leaf tip. So see, it would have been even with that. So that's great. So we're going to say stop. And there's something else that you can do. Um, you can also do a repair pattern. Uh, because we had already set the zone, like if, if um, the spot we wanted to check was way down, we could actually choose repair pattern. And then at this point... Um, Let's see, I'm going to say release. The, anytime the machine can't be moved, you can um, um, go go into here. But I, I actually didn't mean to say release on machine. Um, anyway, we'll say okay. 
um, but I could um, I could move it anywhere that um, was where a stitch that I wanted to check was and I could say closest stitch and now it's showing me exactly where I'm at um, and so I could trace back trace forward just to see how is an area going to stitch. Um, but we, we don't need to repair a pattern, and that's, in fact, how you would do it. If, um, if this was where your stitching ended, then you would pull out enough stitches to um, tie it off and bury those threads, and then you would get your needle back to where that point was so that you could get your needle exactly over that spot and then pull bobbin and sew. But um, that's not where we're at, so we're going to say back. And at this point, I can touch um, the red toolbox and I can say move to start point. It'll ask me if the needle is up. Okay, so now I would be ready to stitch again. There is another thing that I want to show you. Um, if this, if this was my last two rows and there wasn't enough room for all of that second row to stitch, then here's what I could do. I could actually move my needle to whatever point is the lowest I want to stitch to be. So whatever point that is, um, so we're just being random because we're not at the bottom of the quilt, but, but if we were, all we would have to do is touch that partial diamonds and the screen turns pink, which is usually a bad thing, but in this case, it's not. And at this point, all we would have to do is say, pull bobbin and sew, and it would do straight line stitches across the bottom there. So that's a, a great feature. Um, in this case, we're not wanting to do that. And in fact, I don't want a partial row when I get to the... Um, to the bottom. So in in fact, I think I'm just going to pause a moment and do something crazy and just show you if if I were at the bottom and and um I I needed for this row to be a little smaller, um I needed to adjust it a little bit to fit, then I can go back into Pano Stacker screen and I can kind of tweak that height around. You can get away with changing that height just a little bit. I could shake that and change it to nine. Um, you may have to kind of tweak things a little bit, but you can do that and then go back and, and stitch. It may be you get to the bottom and um, you only want to do one row, then you could take take it down to one row. That's, a, that's something that's nice about beginnings is because you're only ever working with two rows at a time. You can get away with, um, with stuff like that very easily. But uh, we're going to leave all this like it is and go back to sew in zones. And because I went back into the Panto Stacker screen, I will need to reset the zone. As you can see, the diamonds are gray. So I'm going to go back to my little pink dot there and... I'm going to touch there, and at this point, I am ready to pull the bobbin. So when I touch pull bobbin, it's going to go to that, that um, green spot, and, um, and, and I'll be able to pull bobbin and, and sew. Uh, one last thing that I want to show you, um, I get asked about what needles I use. I'm going to lay them down here. Um, when I'm using glide thread, then uh, I tend to use the size 18. When I use the finesse thread, which is um, a little finer thread, it's a 50 weight, I will use the size 16. Um, you can order these needles directly from Schmetz. Um, they come in a box of 50. So I have to order with a friend, but um, these are great needles. I don't have shredding, I don't have skipping. They last through several quilts, um, so love these needles, so just wanted to point them out in case you had questions. Um, you know, another thing I get asked is, what am I using on the side? So I'm going to take this off and just show you. Um, I did have side grips by Leader Grips, 
And as you can see, I have this top thing over the batting. When you get side grips by leader grips, you are not supposed to use this over, over the batting. You're just supposed to use it over the backing, but I did. So I broke all of my tops that I had. So these are Mondo clips from Amazon. So um, they come in long strips and you just cut them to your size. So when I had had the leader grips, I had a Q14 plus. When I got the 21, then um, my rod wasn't long enough. The rods that come with Mondo clips are flexible, so that won't work. So I went to Walmart, and this is a um, curtain rod that um, moves. So I moved it to the length I needed, and I taped it, and I tied ribbons on the little ends there. And those are my um, side clamps that I'm using. So just wanted to cover that since I get asked. So I think, I think I've think i covered uh, most of what you need to know. Um, you know, one other thing that I didn't cover is uh, in end zone manager. Um, if I had chosen four point, okay, if I had chosen that and said, okay, then at this point, um, I would need to, and this would be, it thinks I'm starting out. So um, then I would be starting in the top left corner. And and as I would, I'll just go ahead and place it. It's, it's obviously not right. But you'll see that the B lights up. So I could um, move my machine over to the B, um, the top right corner, and I would touch that. And then when I do, the C and the D shows up. And, and you have these lock amounts, um, like if, if I hadn't touched B and only touched A and did the lock width, then it would have gone over the amount of width, total width that had been set in the first screen. So um, that is another way to set. And then um, if I were to stitch this out using this, then when it gets to the end and you pull your bobbin and then you say you're finished, you're going to mark these uh, corners and then you would need to measure up like in this case we had measured up a scant two inches you would need to measure up a scant two inch so that when you were ready to to after this stitched and you were ready to set a again then whatever point that the computer moved to then you'd need to mark two inches higher before you touched a so that would be how you use those corner marks so I just wanted to um, show you that. And of course, each time you go in here, um, then you have to reset your zone. So, uh, so now I'm resetting my zone. So I'll say, okay. And it's going to change back to center and touch that. So now I'm ready to go again. And um, another thing is um, the safe area. Your safe area does show up here. So just wanted to point that out. Um, I think that's everything. And, and options here, you can show the grid that is in there too. It's very faint, but if you ever needed to, to count, then that's, that's how you would do that in here. So I, I hope I've covered everything and I hope you found this helpful.